We're kicking off our 2025 offseason divisional trade preview series with a look at the National League East. Who on the Braves, Marlins, Nationals, Phillies, and Mets could be an option for the Mariners this winter? We'll discuss coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024. This is Tidane Gonzalez and Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Over the next few episodes, we'll be going through each division in baseball to identify potential trade targets for the Mariners this winter. And we're starting today with the NL East. So the Marlins. Phillies, the Braves, the Mets, and the Nationals. Before we dive into it, shout out to our title sponsor today, FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And if you want to hear from me and Colby even more and help support the show, check out our Patreon. Sign up now to hear us create our 2025 Mariners offseason plan before we show it off here. And I guess we'll start with the worst team in the NL East this year, the Miami Marlins, because we've talked about them quite a bit over the last few weeks, both on our Patreon and on here. Talked about guys like Jake Berger, Andrew Renardi. Is it just those guys, Colby, or is there anyone else on this roster who stands out to you? Yeah, there's a few guys, obviously Berger and, and Nardi. Um, great names. Uh, they, they make some deal of sense. Berger, <sighs> if you don't care at all about third base defense and you would, basically put a bucket down there to feel ground balls. If it could hit home runs, like that's what burger is. Although a bucket can catch things. So Jake Berger, maybe not, maybe not a good comp there, but uh, yeah, he's terrible at third base, but right-handed power. That's pretty much his whole game, right? Like he's not going to get on base. Yeah. He's not going to play defense. Uh, he's, he's not a great player. He's really not, but uh, he's yeah. going to hit nukes and that's it. Right. And he's going to probably hit for a decent average. Like he's going to hit 250. He's just not going to walk. He's probably going to hit 25 to 30 home runs. Um, and yeah, you're just going to get terrible defense, whether it's at third or first. Obviously, you care a lot less about terrible first base defense than you do terrible third base defense. But yeah. that's just who he is. Um, yeah, Nardi is is uh, obviously pretty interesting. His uh, peripherals are uh, better than his uh, actual numbers. But, you know... <laughs> We know that this team doesn't love to invest big assets in in you know relief pitching. Uh, even the Gregory Santos trade that was essentially spare parts for Gregory Santos. So if they could get something like that done for Nardi. I bet they do it because when you look at him, it's thirty three percent strikeout rate, three 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 FIP, three three five X FIP, uh, big swing and miss guy, um, walks totally fine. Uh, for how many whiffs he gets. He was a good pitcher last year, so don't stare at that ERA uh, when you look at him. But yeah, there there are those are the two main ones, but there are, you know, Jesus Sanchez, maybe yeah. DA fourth outfield type, like not not the easiest fit on this roster, but he does a lot of the things that the Mariners really like in terms of exit velo and stuff like that. So that's a possibility there. Um I also think there's a couple of other relievers uh in this uh in this mix. Uh, that that could make some sense. Nardi being one, uh, Anthony Bender, aptly named because he has a sharp, sharp slider, uh, and so you know that's kind of more of a seventh inning type of guy. But put up some really good numbers uh, this year, including a two nine two FIP. So there's some guys here, not a not a ton. You know, obviously it's it's not a very good team. Uh, I'll throw a dark horse name at you that is really only applicable if the Mariners do in fact trade from their starting rotation, but Jesus sure. Lazardo is almost certainly getting traded this mm -hmm. winter. He would have been traded in season if he didn't get hurt. So this big upside is a lefty, which you don't have in your rotation right now, misses a ton of bats, throws more than enough strikes, hasn't had the best luck staying healthy, but you get him for two years. And if he is healthy, he's the number three starter. Uh, so, and he's definitely going to be traded uh, this winter. So, yeah, I mean, if you trade Castillo or whatever, maybe you go get uh, maybe you go get Lizardo to replace him. But other than that, it's it's not a great roster. I don't think they're going to trade, you know, Xavier Edwards or or you know Otto Lopez. I mean, maybe, but I, I just don't think that they're going to do that. And even if they don't do, it. it's 
it's probably not the guy that the uh, the Mariners want anyways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really just look at Burger and, and Sanchez as the two possibilities, offensively speaking. Sanchez is more like a fourth outfield left-handed hitting type, uh, particularly if you know Luke Rayleigh is going to spend most of his time at first base in 2025. And then Burger for obvious reasons. Um, and then it's the relievers after that. It's Foucher, it's Bender, it's Nardi. Those three guys are the are the ones that I uh, have my eye on there. So let's move on to the Washington Nationals. Traded off a lot of pieces already uh, midseason, uh, like Lane Thomas, Jesse Winker, et cetera. I want to start with C.J. Abrams because obviously he had the whole casino incident get sent down towards the end of the year. Is that an option? Sure. It could be. Um, what is that? What does that cost? What does CJ? That's, cost? that's the big question, right? Um, because I don't know for sure. He's only 23 years old, so yeah. he's insanely talented. Uh, 24 now, it, right? 24 now. So I'm turning his age 24 season, but played this year at 23, yeah. uh, 20 home runs, 31 stolen bases. Like that's pretty good. You like that? 107 WRC plus. Uh, 246, 314, 433. It's not bad at all for a, a middle infielder. He's a terrible shortstop. Probably the worst shortstop in baseball defensively. God awful. So you're trying to acquire him to play second, presumably. Uh, but he's got, you know, multiple years of club control. I believe three, uh, three years of club control uh, right now. So it's, it's a possibility. But again, obviously there's off the field issues. And uh, he just hasn't really taken that next step. He was kind of a, a very trendy, like this guy's going to explode this year and, and he's going to, you know, got off to gonna, a great start. He did, but obviously the struggles are very real uh, that he doesn't walk a ton. Um, yeah. You know, obviously the defense is, is dreadful. Just absolutely. I'm not, I don't think I'm underselling this. It's, it's awful defense. So yeah. uh, you got to be careful, careful there because he's also, like you said, he's only 24. And you get him for multiple years. So it's going to cost you a little something, something. So he's a possibility. I just think ultimately he's going to cost too much for what the Mariners want to do at that spot. Yeah. And there's too much risk associated with him is, to do that. Is it? Yeah. Is it a matter of the only path to getting him being one of the starting pitchers or Cold Emerson? Because at that point, obviously I'm out. But if it's anyone else, I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I would probably do Cole Young straight up for uh, yeah. for Abrams. Uh, yeah. But if the Mariners didn't want to, I wouldn't blame them. There's sure. just a lot of risk with, with Abrams, uh, and it's not just performance risk. Obviously, the off-the-field stuff does factor in. Now, is that a one-off? Is that an isolated incident? I mean, I don't know. They sent him down at the end of the year. Seemingly, right. you don't do that to a young player who you're kind of supposed to be building around probably don't do that if this was the first time he's done something like that but who knows and this is where you know the mariners uh their scouting department and, and the information that they have that we don't have uh would come into play if you feel good about that you feel like that's a one-off incident or whatever then fine whatever not a big deal uh if you do feel like that's a big problem then giving up a guy like cole young who presumably could help you in the big leagues this year yeah. uh and has six years of club control left and honestly probably a better offensive floor and better defense than Abrams, uh, then yeah, it, it, it's, it's a gray area. So Abrams is super fascinating. Um, I think ultimately what's going to happen is, is that the Mariners are going to be interested. They're going to listen to the price tag and they're going to say, we think we can do better for that price tag. So we're going to look elsewhere, but he's definitely on the radar. Uh, so who, who else stands out to you on this roster? Cause there isn't much for me outside of Abrams. No, I mean like Luis Garcia, his double play partner uh, is pretty yeah. interesting as well, but pretty much the same idea roughly as, as Abrams, except he's actually a good defender, a uh, pretty good defender at second base. Uh, but yeah, you know, he's 20, 20 roughly doesn't walk at all, but doesn't really strike out. Uh, should hit for a pretty decent average. has some good pop. Like Luis Garcia is a pretty solid player. So if you can get him yeah. fine. Again, I, I, I don't think that the, I don't think that the nationals are going to trade him. Uh, this this one yeah, he's though. just now entering arb right so it's coming off yeah. of a career year we'll see other than that like you're not getting mckenzie gore doesn't really make a ton of sense for you yeah. anyways 
I'm not paying uh, Kyle Finnegan what he's going to make an ARB this year, uh, which I think they're projecting at like $9 million or something crazy like that. Like, nope, not doing that. So really it's, it's Abrams and then maybe, maybe Luis Garcia, but probably not. I, I'll say this, if you do end up shopping Miller or Wu um, or even Kirby or Gilbert, uh, I mean, even Castillo, any of your starters to a lesser extent, the Nationals are definitely going to be in the market for starting pitching this winter. Yeah. But if they're not going to be willing to trade you James Wood, if they're not going to trade you Dylan Cruz, I mean, they're not going to trade you CJ Abrams and Brady House, you know, they run out of pieces really quick, but if they are willing to put those guys on the table, those are the type of players that would probably interest uh, Jerry and Justin enough to listen, uh, particularly on, on Castillo, obviously, but Castillo is mm-hmm. also the cheapest of the, of the bunch. But so yeah, the Mariners do trade one of their starters. Washington is kind of a dark horse team to watch, but aside from that, there's just not a lot here outside of CJ Abrams. And even that is a pretty big question mark. Agreed. So let's get into the three playoff teams in the NL East coming up here in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. NFL fans can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. Yeah, you heard that right. $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. We are going division by division, looking at trade targets for the Mariners this winter. And today we are doing the NL East. Just talked about the Miami Marlins and Washington Nationals. Not a lot there. Both destinations. Does that potentially change here with the Atlanta Braves, Colby? Not really. Um, I guess the guy that I want to start with is is Ozzy Albies. Yeah. Is there any shot they would move on from Albies? Potentially. Uh, the Braves are going to be in the market for starting pitching. Uh, yeah. There's a decent chance they lose Freed. Uh, so they do have Sale. Uh, they do have Lopez. Um, and then it's Freed, who's a free agent. And then Schwellenbach. Uh, there's some real reliever risks there. I know he had a good year this year, but there's some issues there with Schwellenbach that they're we shouldn't 100% believe that he's absolutely a starting pitcher, but even if he is, there's still one guy short, a couple guys short. They have some arms in, in the minors, but that is not a particularly good system uh, down in Atlanta. There are some major issues there, and and Atlanta has a bit of a, a payroll crunch that they're going to try and work through because they're going to start next year with one of the highest payrolls, and they've already gone over the, the luxury tax. Uh, so those – tax thresholds those penalties for going over they start to hit pretty hard here so they're going to have to dump some salary or or they're not going to be as aggressive as they usually would be um so yeah that they could look to move somebody like ozzy albies uh who makes a tremendous amount of sense for the mariners i just i'm not sure how you get him without giving up miller or Wu. right is it a castillo deal is there a path to making that happen I don't think for Albies. Um, yeah. The the one deal that we, we've kind of pitched here recently is the idea of like Luis Castillo uh, for Matt Olson, who are both making roughly the same money. Yeah. Uh, Olson has one year of club control beyond Castillo, but that's not necessarily a selling point when these guys are in their mid 30s. Uh, so, you know, Olson, not the same year he had last year, still pretty good, but just not the same guy he was last year as is expected yet like 57 homers last year. So, uh, but yeah, you could do something like that, but if you're Atlanta and you're trying to, to, you know, save money, that's just a salary swap. That doesn't do anything for you. So, uh, I don't think Austin Riley's available. If he was, obviously he would make a lot of sense. Albies makes a lot of sense. I just don't know that you can get that done without, uh, actually hurting yourself by giving up Wu or Miller. Yeah. Um, and Albies has some questions. Uh, so, yeah, there. On the surface, it seems like there would be some good answers here, but I think when you actually line up the two teams and try to find a deal that works, there's not a ton. And there, there's not a ton. I just don't think they're yeah. natural trade trade partners. 
Yeah, you mentioned the the concerns on Albies. Two of the last three years, he's been a sub league average bat. He's been a ninety four mm-hmm. WRC plus in twenty twenty two, ninety five WRC plus this year, and also only played sixty four games in twenty twenty two and ninety nine games this year. Yeah. So what kind There's, of player are you getting really in Ozzy Albies? Are you getting the 125 WRC plus guy that he was in 2023? Because that was his career year so far. Is that just kind of the outlier? Or is he more of like a 105, 110 WRC plus guy? Like he was pretty much in 2021, 2020, 2018. Right. I mean, he's 27 years old. Uh, or he played this year as a 27 year old. It's a nice contract. It's not like he's making an insane amount of money. He's not, he's very well, you know, no. uh, under what he would be in the open market, but there's some real questions here, not just with health, but with performance. And when you're talking about how do we get this guy and you start throwing around names like Brian Wu or, or Bryce Miller, which I think is probably what it cost. Yeah. There's no point. Like, can you get Ozzy Albies for Cole young? Fine, whatever, do it. Sure. Can you, but you can't, I don't think you can. And again, because this team is looking to cut payroll, I don't think that you're going to be able to do like Luis Castillo for Ozzy Albies. Um, maybe if they're really desperate to cut payroll, you could do like Castillo for Albies and Rizal Iglesias, who's making a ton of money this year, who uh-huh. if he wasn't would make some sense. He's pretty good this year, but yeah, I, I just, I think there are players that make a lot of sense for Seattle on this team. Mm-hmm. I don't think that the two sides match up all that well. Uh, yeah, just how trade. do they get them? Yeah. yeah, how do they get there? So, what about this? Uh, what about this guy named Jared Kelnick? Um, well, you probably just wait a couple weeks until he's non-tendered and uh, take a stab at him. Do I you mean, think they might actually non-tender him for what two million bucks? I think there's uh, a shot. Bucks? I wouldn't say it's a good one, mm-hmm. but again, if you're trying to skim money, like you're trying to save some money, you're trying to. Jared Kelnick is not worth two million dollars. He's not. So. You know, are you willing to just to eat that on the off chance that, uh, you know, he finally figures it out in his sixth time through the big leagues? I don't know. But two million bucks is not nothing, but it's not so much that they're like they'd be stupid to to roll it back. I just think that yeah. if you're I think Kelnick needs to be in, in like Oakland. Well, Sacramento, I think he needs to be in, in Pittsburgh like he needs. He needs to be in a team that's not trying to compete for anything because that's all he's played for in his career. And these teams just don't have time to wait around. So, yeah, Kelnick's probably going to get tendered, but I would not be shocked at all if he was non-tendered. And I suspect he gets floated around in quite a few trade uh, packages this winter as well. All right, we'll be going over the Phillies and the Mets rosters in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks. Price Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Price Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to a hundred times your money on Price Picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars. Download the Price Picks app today and use the promo code Locked On MLB to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's promo code L O C K E D O N. MLB on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks, run your game. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Once again, we are going division by division, looking at trade targets, potential trade targets for your Seattle Mariners. And today we are doing the NL East. We've talked about the Braves, Nationals, and Marlins. Let's look at the Philadelphia Phillies. Any of these guys actually potentially available for the Mariners? I mean, we talked about Alec Bohm a lot, mm-hmm. especially AKA over the last Alex week or so. Bombs. Yeah. Alex Bombs. That's right. Yep. Uh, it's possible that uh, Brandon Marsh could be a, a available. Yep. I've heard that. Uh, and then, you know, we've talked about this team as, as one of the potential suitors for Luis Castillo, a team that, I can wrap my head around him waving his no trade clause to go to. Mm-hmm. So maybe someone like Edmundo Sosa makes sense in a as part of a Castillo trade. Sure. Anyone else stand out? I mean, no, like it's it's Sosa in the right circumstances. It's uh, Alex Bombs uh, in the right circumstances. 
Uh, what's interesting here, or a player that's interested, Brandon Marsh is pretty interesting. Kind of the issue there is that the 32% strikeout rate is, is kind of alarming, especially for a guy of his profile. Like this is not, you know, uh, it, it, it's not no power. Like Marsh has some power, but it's not 25, 30 home run power. And he's going to strike out 33% of the time. And he really shouldn't be playing up the middle. You know, like Marsh is just kind of that weird little profile where it's like, yeah, but also no, like how much is it going to cost also? So probably not him uh mm-hmm. either uh harper would be great so a turner but that's not happening uh schwarber and castellanos it's like do you want to give up castillo do you want one of those guys back in your castillo package probably not and again the phillies like the braves are a team that is already really close to that luxury tax threshold and, and they're apparently about to make a run at soto right so they're going to have to cut money like at the end of the day they're going to have to cut some salary uh so yeah, that would be a guy like Baum. That would be uh, trying to trade Schwarber or Real Muto or Castellanos, but none of those guys make sense except for Baum mm-hmm. for Seattle. They're going to try and trade, uh, you know, Taiwan Walker. That just that doesn't make sense for Seattle. They don't need Taiwan Walker. So um, mm-hmm. I think that Baum is the guy here that really stands out. And I, I think there is a high possibility that Seattle really likes bomb or that's the guy they want to take the shot on i should say yeah. uh yeah. and i i think you can get them because i don't think this is going to be a, a case where they're going to want major league talent in return necessarily uh because again they're trying to save eight million bucks and they have sosa who could play third base so uh yeah. i i think maybe he might be available for prospects uh or maybe prospects in like a reliever or something like that so bomb is the guy uh, on this list uh, or on this team. That makes a lot of sense for Seattle. There's always bullpen guys on every team that you can look at and be like, yeah, you know, that would work. But, uh, you know, I think for the most part of the big names here, it's Bohm. And then it may be if you, I don't know, if you want to take on Schwarber or something in a Castillo trade to even out money, uh, maybe you could do something like that. But ultimately, I think this is Alec Bohm. Uh, and I, I think, that's pretty much it. Maybe Sosa uh, in, in the right circumstances, but yeah, yeah, it, it's just, again, team looking to shed salary. You're not really going to spend a ton of money this winter. So it, it's not the most natural fit, obviously. Damn. Kyle Schwarber and a Mary's uniform. It'd be great. You got me thinking. You got me thinking. Uh, a couple of months ago, you mentioned Bryson Stott to me. You still mm-hmm. kind of on that train? I mean, I just think it's tough to figure out how to get that deal done. Um, 88 WRC plus this year. I know, but it's, it's very similar to like Nico Horner where it's like, yeah, you're, the bad is whatever. You're paying a little bit for the defense. Uh, mm-hmm. You're paying for the stolen bases. Like you're paying for right. essentially you're, you're looking at another Victor Robles uh, and then you see if he can go on a run like Robles went on because you know, Stodd and, and, and Robles and and like Andres Jimenez, another example. And these guys, it's like, yeah, what are they with the bat? Probably mostly about average, but you get plus defense, you get plus base running uh, and they become valuable players. So I I think that's what uh, I think that's where my interest in Stott lies. Again, I'm just not sure how you get there without giving up Miller or or Wu and and all that. So sure. Yeah. It's just, I, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Not for stop. So yeah, the Phillies, again, where they are with their payroll, which is a lot of teams in this particular division, means they probably want to dump guys who are making a lot of money. Seattle can't really take on those guys. They have to they have to be in the mid-market guys, which is why a guy like Alex Bombs makes a lot of sense. Oh, Alex Bombs. Um, we are most definitely trademarking that. So we're recording this on Sunday. Uh, mm-hmm. The Mets are still alive at the time of this recording. They might not be by the time you're watching this. They might have gotten well, I mean, eliminated either the, tonight. By the time you guys yeah. are watching this, they're either in the World Series or they were eliminated. Yep, yep. Let's so, go, LFGM. Uh, so, this is really a bullpen team when it comes to the trade targets, and there aren't many of them even there uh, for me. I, I just I don't, I don't really see anything on this roster. You don't want Electric Eddie D? <laughs> Hey, I mean, yeah. Luis Castillo for Edwin Diaz. 
no, no. Uh, hard no. Um, hard I mean, yeah, no. offensively, I mean, Jeff McNeil, we can do that whole thing for like the fifth yeah. offseason in a row. I just wasn't very I good. I know people are going to talk about Mark Vientos a lot. Yeah, I mean, we should mention him. But again, my question is, how do you get Vientos without giving up Wu or Miller? And if you're saying don't give up Wu and Miller for Vientos, really? This like also I, seems like a like a Castillo destination potentially. Could be. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't be shocked at all if the Mets are gearing up to go after Soto either, and the Mets have already spent three hundred oh, yeah. million dollars. So, uh, yeah. you know, how many years are they willing to to be above this luxury tax before they start losing draft picks and and international free agent money and all that stuff? Because you mm. know the owner may not care, but if you're the GM of this baseball team, right? Like those things are important. It's how you build a sustainable winner, uh, you know, along with spending appropriately, which cone appropriately, uh, like we all wish our David or David Cohn, we all wish that Stephen Cohn was the owner of the Mariners. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's not. And and so, and even Cohn at some point, he will, he will drop his, his payroll below the luxury tax. He could take it to the bank because he's going to, he's going to do that because at some point, the taxes get so high on that that it's just not feasible financially uh, in their eyes uh, to to pull that off. So they're going to drop payroll at some point, and if they're going after Soto, it might have to be sooner than later. Uh, but that's all the more reason why Mark Vientos probably isn't going anywhere. He's not making any money yet, and he's a very good player. So yeah, I, I think you're lo- again if you're looking for kind of that like middle tier of guys who are making some money that teams might be looking to dump. McNeil does fit that. He's just not very good anymore, which is a bummer. Yeah. Um, and also, I'll just throw it out there. I, I don't think this is going to happen, but Brandon Nimmo would be a great fit, I think, for uh, for Seattle. Uh, but yep. again, he still has, I think, six years left on that deal. He's still yeah. owed $120 million bucks. Like, eh. And then, like, Starling. He's already slowing down. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he was playing injured this year, but. Yeah, uh, yeah I know. Starling Marte, if you do some kind of Hanager swap, but I think Marte has an extra year on his deal. So that really doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah. Like you said, this team, there's some bullpen guys here who are interesting. Um, but uh, Marte is a free agent after this year, I believe. After 2025. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting. Uh to see how they handle their money and all that stuff. But the guys who like are, are a particular interest to me on this team, they're free agents after, you know, after they're eliminated or after the world series, right? Uh, it's Iglesias, it's, you know, Martinez, it's Winker, uh, it's Manaya, it's Alonzo. Like, right. So yeah, those guys. Yeah. The two guys that I'm looking at here, Reed Garrett, but he's mm-hmm. still pre arm and is coming off of a really good year. How much does that cost? And then Tyler McGill. That's really it, though. There isn't much here with the Mets. No, it's just you don't really line up all that well with most of the teams in the NL East for one reason or another. Mostly money, uh, but also these are just teams that are in different places than you are. That is uh, going to do it for us. Before we get out of here, a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tidane Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Tidane Gonzalez, Colby at CPAT11, that's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.